When I was 12 years old, I decided to become a vegetarian. If I ate meat, especially red meat, I imagined my teeth piercing through layers of fur and skin before getting to the ground beef that had been processed heavily before it reached my mouth in the form of a burger. I disagreed heavily with the way that meat had become a product that was made in huge, claustrophobic farms where the animals were terribly treated. I've always felt connected to nature, but in my early teen years, the connection grew into my spirituality. The consumption of meat went against my spirituality in many ways. In her piece entitled Emergent, artist Isabella Kirkland depicts a great number of species, mainly birds, butterflies, and bats, in a peaceful and natural habitat far away from mankind's actions. Sitting in crystal bridges, with nature surrounding the museum, there was an even greater understanding of the artist's purpose. After my initial appreciation for the beauty of the painting, I decided to look into the artist and the piece more specifically in an attempt to appreciate it further. The piece was a member of a four-part collection depicting the four layers of the rainforest and the plants and animals who inhabit each. The series documents species which have been discovered only in the past 20 years. As an amateur scientist, Kirkland states that you can't protect something if you don't value it or know what it's for. The detail that is placed in every feather on the birds, every hair on the bats, and the minuscule patterns on the butterflies seem to imply that the artist feels a similar way to nature that I do. In the proto-Renaissance period of art, the Northern Europeans put extreme detail into their religious paintings because they believed that one must render all objects with extreme detail to represent the way that God sees the world. The artists labored heavily to represent the world with every element possible. In this way, they were expressing their spirituality. The painting, which seems to be making a statement about the continuing awe of the world that we live in, was an inspiration to my spirituality in the same way that those paintings were an inspiration to their viewers. As someone who looks upon the slow degradation of our environment with heartbreak, the painting's depiction of newly found species offers a hope that many other animals will continue to survive and possibly even prosper in our world that seems to be dying. In many ways, most of the things that I believe in and love are dying. The world is being polluted by car emissions, excess waste, and inappropriate disposal of trash. While Christians worry about sin, I worry about global warming and its effects on our world. In his book entitled Spirituality, author Roger Gottlieb states that spirituality is not essentially about pleasure. In fact, the worry that I feel can be handled in one of two ways. I can either let it consume me and lose hope, or I can take that feeling and find a way to prevent that outcome through my actions. In many ways, I choose the latter. My views towards the possible future demise of our natural world can be placed easily on the wheel of spirituality under the sense of interconnectedness. I feel a profound connection to nature, as that is where I go to experience and cultivate my spirituality. I would imagine that while Kirkland was creating her piece of artwork, she was picturing the future of these animals. Did she wonder how much time would pass between when these animals were discovered and when they would be extinct? Gottlieb makes a point of saying that in many religions, there is a purity that comes with being back in touch with nature. If we believe that God is the source of all creation, then even if there are real differences between us and snails, we also have something, perhaps the most important thing, in common.